hopefully we have literally not lost everything. Actually, I was kind of hoping this video would end, uh, you know, end a different way. <laughs> uh. You have to pick one. You always choose the lesser of two weevils. <laughs> what? Oh, that's not good. Uh, all of our emergency food supply could be ruined. Welcome back, Hex Maniacs. You know, almost two years ago, I uploaded a video where I showed you three forever foods and how to store them long term. We've continued to add to that supply and rotate through it. Now, since then, a lot of people left comments on that video saying that I did it all wrong and it was all going to go bad. The main food source I talked about was whole grain wheat or unmilled wheat berries. <laughs> you said wheat berries. Yeah, well, that's what they're called. I didn't come up with the name. Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever, whatever, wheat, wheat berries. <laughs> anyway, this process was kind of new to me at the time, so was I right or was I wrong? Today we're gonna find out because we're gonna open it up and see if it is indeed unfit for human consumption. Before we open up these buckets of wheat berries though, I wanna talk about what makes wheat berries such a great survival food to store in your prepper pantry for disasters or hard times. Not to mention, it's also a great nutrient-packed food for every day. The keto people are losing their minds right now. This is blasphemy. Obviously, they can be milled into flour, but they can also be eaten many other ways as well. First, you need to understand that unmilled wheat berries, which you can mill into flour, is not the same thing as buying flour at the store. Fresh milled wheat berries contain 40 of the 44 essential food nutrients to sustain life. Flour from the grocery store is often called dead flour. <laughs> When wheat is refined and the bran and germ are separated, it loses more than 30 nutrients. To offset this, the US government requires flour to be enriched with three B vitamins and iron. In the early 1900s, white flour became more affordable and widely used. People began to develop diseases due to high consumption of white flour and white bread that was vitamin deficient, which led to the general population becoming vitamin deficient. The government realized what was happening and in 1941 mandated the enrichment of flour. Milled flour generally has a shelf life of six to 18 months. Unmilled wheat berries can last indefinitely when stored properly. Like honey, white rice, dried corn, beans, and other foods, unmilled wheat berries are a potential forever food. Forever, ever, forever, ever. Yep. But ever, ever. The trick is you don't mill the wheat until you're ready to use it. There are stories of wheat being found in the pyramids and not only being edible, but also being able to germinate. There are also stories of that not being true. <laughs> so make of that what you will. At least it is plausible. Whole green wheat flour is full of fiber and lower your cholesterol and doesn't spike your blood sugar like white flour. Whole grains are associated with a decreased risk of heart disease, stroke, and type two diabetes. Not to mention, it can help keep you regular. As amazing as whole grain is, it isn't a complete protein, but that's easy to remedy by also storing and eating beans. The combination of wheat and beans creates a complete protein. You complete me. You had me at hello. You don't have to eat them at the same time. You just eat them both in the same day to get the essential amino acids that your body needs to thrive. <clears throat> Welcome to Baking with a Haxman. Today we have special guest, Mrs. Haxman. I don't know why I have this stupid accent. Let me lose this coat. Kim's gonna go over this stuff and uh, show us a little bit more about how this works. This is my everyday milling machine. And this is the Wonder Mill. It's one of the ones that most people use. It can mill right in here. I have, excuse me, what do I have? <laughs> I have a hard white wheat. <clears throat> and just a little bit about some of the wheats that we have. What are you doing, freak? Hard white wheat and hard red wheat are the ones that you're gonna to wanna to have for rising yeast breads. Also have soft white wheat, which is for your pancakes and your biscuits and stuff like that. Iron corn, which honestly I have not used yet, but I want to. Um, it has a nutty flavor and adds dimension to whatever you put it in. Spelt, another one that has a slight nutty flavor. I use this in our pancakes all the time just to have a little more nutrition. Hmm. Would you say that he who spelt it, dealt it? Not smelt it, <laughs> dealt it. That's so weird. We're gonna use some hard red. And it always says to turn the machine on before you put the grain in there, but I don't like to do that, it makes me nervous, so I don't do it. 
Also, you have different thicknesses here. What does it say, Adam? I can't read it from this side. Pastry, bread, and coarse. Okay, I use pastry on everything. I don't care what it says. I like the really fine grain, and my friend told me to do that. That's what she does, so I'm doing it too. If your friend jumps off a cliff, you're gonna jump too? So I'm gonna press. Ooh, girl, you want that lid on there first? No, 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 you don't put the lid. That's just really? for storage. Oh, okay. Okay, press I the button. I can't, make a mess. I can't find it. Where's the button? It's gonna get loud. Can you smell that? I wish you could smell that. It's like an earthy smell. I can it's just, smell it. It's full of nutrients and vitamins. I can smell it. I love it. Okay, I'm glad you can smell it. So what you do after that, you just unplug that right there, twist it in, and then here's the big reveal. Look at that. So the darker part right there is the brand. And you can sift that out for uh, certain pastries and stuff. I try to leave it in as much as I can, but with some breads, I do sift it out because it makes it heavy. I hear that you can add it back later, but I haven't done that yet. So for this one, you just fill this hopper right here. Get to the hopper. Right here, you are going to adjust it and whatever meal you decide on will be a little bit different. So this will be really coarse. Let's see that. Here's the coarse. Okay, so that's your coarseness there. And then- Well, of course. Well, of course. I'm going to make, take it all the way to, what do you call it, fine. And you can see the difference. So that is super, super fine. I don't know if you can tell. Um, super fly too. Yeah, super fly. A question that was asked a lot on that old video was, well, I have a allergy to gluten, so, what can people do if they have an allergy to gluten? Okay, so you can still make bread. A lot of people use the almond flour. Everyone knows about that one. And oats, quick rise breads is what they call them because there's no yeast involved. But you can also grind down some uh, regular corn. Make sure you get organic. Here's quinoa. It comes in white and red. The buckwheat, you can use it. And then sorghum. Uh, sorghum? Is it sorghum? Sorghum? I don't know how you say it, but it's kind of like isopropyl alcohol. I don't know. Um, like? Well, this? hey, you have seeds too. I bought seeds before I bought that because, you know, some, sometimes you can't just get a whole bulk of stuff. You want to look, see what it looks like? I could just open this, but I've been wanting to open, open it. Up. Okay, and I have an issue. Let me try and open it up without my issue. I can't open things. Oh, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Oh, no. <laughs> I you can do it. I did it. So after I open this up, I will put it in a mason jar and I have a red lid that should fit this as well for long-term storage. Yikes. Oh my gosh, help. <laughs> See, it's not just bucket, me. Okay. <laughs> yes, success, okay. So this is what they look like. Oh, they're so pretty. Beautiful. Wow. Those are really neat. All right, so my intended use, like you could just like put this out and grow it yourself, but also um, you can use a lot of these and make like a bean salad, quinoa salad, like make different kinds of foods, not just, you know, bread. I mean, you can eat them as a cereal. You can put them like over a salad or you can put them in soups, obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all kinds of ways you I mean, can eat. Yeah, and it's not a, just a green salad. I mean, if there's different kinds of salad. There's like just grain salads, but you flavor them differently. And it's like you can take wheat berries and boil them for an hour or so in chicken stock or even just water, whatever you have on hand, salt a little bit and let them boil down. And then they, they soften up where you can just eat them directly. So uh, if that's something you can do in a poop hits the van situation. Did, did, did you say poop hits the van? Van! If you wanna crank up the benefits of whole grains, you can let them sprout. This will increase the nutrient density, like over 300% more vitamin B2, 100% more biotin, 300% more vitamin C, almost 300% more folic acid, as well as a bunch of other good stuff. Sprouting also allows your body to act they're not doing out.
Sprouting also allows your body to digest more easily as the gluten has begun breaking down already. All you do is soak the berries overnight. Then you drain them and let the moist wheat berries set for another 12 to 24 hours as they should start to sprout. Then you can dry them at 110 degrees Fahrenheit in a dehydrator or dry them on the lowest setting in your oven for 12 hours or so. Make sure they are completely dry, then grind them like you would the regular wheat berries. It's more work, but it's more of a benefit. It's more beneficial. It's more beneficial too. Where can you get wheat berries? Well, lots of places actually, but probably not your local grocery store. We get ours from several places, but if you can get it close to your home, that's even better. Sometimes we order from Amazon, and every time I mention Amazon, people say don't support them. Yes, they are a scuzzy company, but just because you buy off of Amazon doesn't mean you are buying from Amazon. The advantage of ordering off of Amazon is free shipping, because the shipping cost is what kills you due to the weight of the wheat. The best way that I know of is to join a co-op. That way you get a lower shipping cost since the shipping is spread out between everyone in the co-op. Always try to buy non-GMO and organic wheat berries though. Other than the obvious health benefits, you may also want to grow your own wheat from the wheat berries and that probably won't work with GMO wheat. Now that's what's so cool about storing wheat for prepping purposes, the food is the seed. The downside is it's heavy to move and if you do want to grow it, you'll need a big space to grow a significant amount. How do you store wheat long term? Well, you need an airtight container and you can easily get 30 years or more of storage. What we chose to use was these airtight resealable food grade buckets and oxygen absorbers. You could also use vacuum bags or mylar bags or any combination of all or any of them. Did I say that right? Anyway, and that's where one of the first points of controversy controversy. <laughs> and that's where the first parts of controversy starts. <laughs> we didn't use mylar bags. You have to decide what's best for your situation. The second thing that disturbed people in that original video was the part of the video where the camera was locked on my face. I used a much heavier camera at that time and Kim's arms were getting tired, so the video was so shaky, I had to try to stabilize it in editing. It is literally the most watched part of the entire video. But don't worry, we will never let that happen again. Come here, come here. Just because you seal it up doesn't mean your weed is safe. Behold the weevil. Also, if you're viewing pleasure, Weevil Knievel. These filthy insects can wreak havoc on your wheat, even in a sealed container. It's important that when you buy wheat berries that aren't already sealed with CO2, that you put them in a freezer for at least uh, three to five days to kill any unseen weevils. Then you can let the bag of wheat set out for a day to make sure that you get rid of any condensation before sealing them up. You can also add food grade diatomaceous earth to the berries, Kim, what, is, what do you call diatomaceous earth? Diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous. Or D-E yeah. for short. You can also add a small piece of dry ice to the wheat berries. Dry ice is the solid form of carbon dioxide. Now, as the dry ice turns back into a gas, it forces the oxygen out of the bucket. Basically, all you do is put a little bit of the wheat berries in the base of the bucket, then put a small piece of dry ice, followed by the remainder of the wheat berries. Now, put your lid on, and as the dry ice turns back into carbon dioxide, the lid will swell, and then you can burp it, and then close it up and seal it, and you're good to go. A lot of people also put bay leaves in um, their buckets to kill any weevils. We've never done that before. Feel free to use any leftover dry ice for fun science experiments with the kids. Let's see how our two-year-old wheat berries are doing. Are they rotten? Let's find out. Jeez! Hey now, bro. Hey, look here. Don't throw this weed out. It's good. I've been eating it. Ugh. That is disgusting. Uh -huh. You know what's doing here, right? Let's test another one. This is the oldest bucket that we have that I just pulled out of the back of the... Uh... All right. Well, this is not... All right, this sucks. <laughs> Not the outcome I was hoping for. Um, what is that? Crawling on my hands. That is a freaking weevil. So um, now I'm freaked out a little bit that we need to go through all of our buckets because like we went through the process on these 
Like this is shocking actually because everything was done right on here but some, something wasn't done right. We have to go through everything now and hopefully we have literally not lost everything. They're just all crawling in here. See we had a bag one time that we left that we forgot to freeze and forgot to put in a bucket and that bag was just alive. You could just hear it going shh, 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 shh. It was crazy. I threw it in the fire and burned the whole thing up. Burn it all. <laughs> but I am like, I am flabbergasted that this has these in here. And just like that, all the funny was gone. <laughs> uh, all the funny for me anyway, might be funny for you. So we've gotten all of our buckets that are not sealed with CO2. And we're gonna open them up and see, does this get worse? All right, so that bucket's okay. It's so good. At the very least, every one of these buckets is gonna get some dry ice in it. And we're probably gonna put most of this stuff in Mylar bags. So here's what I would suggest. I would suggest maybe a plan that is all of the above. You know, uh, I generally like to have a backup for a backup for a backup, but because we were new to this, I just thought, oh, this is sealed up really good. There's no way. And it, honestly, I think probably would be most of the time. As you saw, most of the buckets were totally fine. I think what happened was on this bucket, we probably just, we were getting a bunch of weed at, this, at that time, and this probably came in a bag. We probably went through the process with a bunch of the bags, and it wouldn't surprise me if we actually skipped putting that bag in the freezer somehow. While wheat berries make a great forever food that stores for years, what if I told you you could have fresh protein every day that also stores for years? Just check this video out. I was running out of breath. It's on my throat. <laughs> <laughs>